the Sony a7S III was released back in September 2020. This camera was said to be the new flagship from Sony, recording high quality videos up to 4K 120 FPS. Now with mobile editing becoming the new standard, editing with these files might be tricky. This camera was made for those wanting everything, even a full-size touchscreen, long-lasting battery life and no overheating issues. The a7S III was also introduced to a brand new touch UI which made changing individual settings easier for any user. Over the past year or so, I've been receiving comments, DMs, and emails from you owning a Sony camera, saying you cannot import the footage recorded to your iPad, and that the file format is not supported, whether this is an A6000, A6500, or a Sony A7S III, or any other model. In today's video, I will run you through my workflow of using all these different formats and how you can record and edit all the different file formats in LumaFusion. And as for editing in LumaFusion, many are still using older models which don't have the USB Type-C connection. So I will also include some older models in this test. So the models we're using are the 2021 M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the 2018 iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the 2016 iPad 9.7 inch, this is the base model. We're also going to throw the iPhone 13 Pro Max into the test as many of you might be editing your videos using your iPhone. Recording, importing and using any of these clips with the different devices will be somewhat the same and the recordings from the Sony a7S III will be XAVC S1 or I up to XAVC HS 4K, both in 4K and 1080p. That will leave us with five records that we're gonna import to the iPad and link to LumaFusion. The frame rate will be the highest in each format and record settings will be up to 600 megabits per second at 422 10 bits. Each record will be about 5 to 6 seconds long, just to minimize the size for the sake of this tutorial. Starting with the M1 iPad Pro, connecting the Sony a7S III to a multi-ported hub which is connected to the iPad, we will get access to the camera's folder within the files folder on the iPad. The location of the files may vary depending on how many SD cards you're using. I'm here using a multi-port hub from Satechi. These are my favorite ones and I've been using them for many years. I'm also using the included USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable, which was included with the Sony a7S III. Now, when selecting the different clips inside the files folder, we can see that only one of these says save video. This is because the iPad natively supports this file to be saved to the Photos app. But this doesn't mean that we can't use or edit these files on the iPad. It only means that we can't save it to the Photos app. So for my workflow using files which is not supported by the Photos app, I start by organizing folders depending on what type of video I make. Creating folders and adding a system will give you a much better and faster workflow. You will immediately feel like editing is more fun as everything is organized and once you start editing, you have everything in one place without needing to close the LumaFusion app to find the different assets that you want to use. But the build-up process of making folders, locating files, and copying them over to the different folders might seem tedious at first. But all professional editors do this before the actual editing process begins. Now, depending on the storage on your iPad, model, and so on, I recommend that you make the folders on an SSD disk so you can work from this. This will save you a lot of space. Now, if you don't have an iPad supporting external drive editing in LumaFusion, you can do this in the files folder. And since not everyone has the newest iPad models with the USB Type-C connection and the option to edit directly from an external drive, we're gonna make the folders inside the files app instead of the SSD. So the first folder will be named Tutorial 800. The subfolders will be A7S3, Music, Overlays, and Sound Effects. The subfolders Music, Overlays, and Sound Effects will only be examples and we're not gonna fill these with files. So now that we have the folders, we can start to locate the clips on the Sony A7S III. All these clips has been filmed in the highest possible settings in 420 and 422. The video quality on worst is up to 600 megabits. Now earlier we saw that we could only select save video on one of the files. If we now select all the files and choose save video, go over to the photos app, we can only see that one video. 
So what we need to do is to select all the files we recorded. Here you can select share and copy or just tap, hold and drag. So I'm gonna tap, hold and drag these to the side and use my other hand to tap on my iPad. Here you can see the folder named tutorial 800. Tapping on this, we will also see the subfolders. Selecting the A7S3 folder, we can now drop the clips and they will be exported from the A7S3 over to the files folder. And now that we have all our clips moved over to the iPad, we can open up LumaFusion and start linking the folder. And inside of LumaFusion, we need to select the source icon on the top left corner and then choose files. To link the folders, we need to select add link to folder, then select the place where we made the folders, which in this case is on my iPad. From the drop down menu, we need to locate the tutorial 800 folder and select this. Tapping on this, we can now see the drop down of the subfolders, but we want to link the entire folder, so we're gonna select the tutorial 800 and tap done. Now the tutorial 800 folder is linked to LumaFusion and the same goes for the subfolders which was included. Now if you have multiple projects that you're working on in the future and you like to work on different projects from time to time, you can also select on my iPad and link the entire main files folder to LumaFusion for easier access to everything which is laying inside the files folder. Now selecting the tutorial 800 folder, we can see the subfolders. Since we only put files in the A7S3 folder, we're gonna tap on this. Here we can now see all the five files recorded. Selecting all and dragging them over to the timeline, we can now start editing. If we select the info button and tap on the different clips, we can also see the difference in resolution, quality and bitrate. But how is it for older iPads and iPhones? Instead of going through the entire process again, I prepared the files on the different devices. So starting with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, there seems to be a bug. Opening the files from the linked folder, none of the clips are playing. However, selecting the clips and tapping on share and then choose LumaFusion, the files will be imported and works fine. I reported this issue to LumaTouch and hope Hopefully this will be fixed with the next update, but using all the different formats still works even on an iPhone. But how do we get these files over to an iPhone? The step is fairly easy and similar to getting the files over to the M1 iPad. Since the iPhone doesn't have a USB Type-C connection, we need to use a separate dongle. This also depends on the SD card you're using. I'm using a CF Express card, so I would need a dongle with a Lightning to USB Type-A. Here, I also recommend using original Apple products. Connecting this to the iPhone and the Sony A7S III to the dongle with the included USB-A to USB-C cable, you can now transfer the files to your iPhone's files folder. Be aware that you will need to connect your iPhone to a charger, as the camera draws too much power to handle the transfer without the charger being connected. The dongle I'm using is the Apple Lightning to USB-A with additional support for charging. I will also leave a link to everything needed in the description below. Now with the charger connected, you can now start to transfer the files over to your iPhone using the same method on the M1 iPad Pro. Now for the 2018 iPad Pro, the process and result is the same as the M1 iPad Pro, as both has the USB Type-C connection. And for the older models, the 2012 iPad mini and the 2016 base model, the process is the same as the iPhone. Connect a dongle with Lightning to USB-A and Lightning to your iPad, then connect a charger your camera, turn on your camera and start transferring the files. The 2016 base model really surprised me with the performance and being able to import and run all the different file formats from the Sony A7S III. So all in all, if you think your files cannot be run on the iPad model you have, or you just don't want to invest in a high quality camera because you don't know if you can edit those files on your iPad with LumaFusion, you can always ask the retailer or bring the iPad and your dongles to the store to test the different settings to see if that works with your iPad. And as for the newer iPads and iOS updates, more formats and codecs will eventually be available as the demand grows. 
With the new features coming to LumaFusion, in a few years, this will be the lead editing platform for many lightweight travelers and content creators just like you and me. But I wish I had different cameras to test with like Canon, Panasonic, etc. So please leave a comment down below with your results from this workflow to help others decide which camera to get. Were you able to record and use all the different formats with LumaFusion or was there some that didn't work? I hope you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like for the algorithm, subscribe if you haven't already, check out robotchkevlogs.com for crazy good deals on motion graphic templates, presets and transitions for LumaFusion. And that's gonna be it for me, thanks for watching, stay safe and I will see you in the next video.